Hi everyone, it's Natalie here, and uh, we are entering into March, which I cannot believe. Oh my gosh. So today, uh, the day that this drops, it would be the 1st of March. Um, so this reading goes from the 1st of March through to the 7th of March. Wow. So even and well placed. And green felt like a good color. And it also felt right to bring in something fun and playful like the five cent tarot. I'm going to leave it wide open for which uh, oracle deck I choose this week, or in fact, if I choose to use an oracle deck this week. So I won't try to go into that yet. Um, that said, uh, I do want to make make it known that I have a video coming out shortly, if it hasn't already, um, that goes into greater depth about the general reading spread. So um, in the last couple of weeks, there's been some back and forth about um, different different rules and so forth and about the way they're supposed to function. And I have to say, I love those debates so much. Oh my gosh, that's it's like nerding out in a way that makes me extremely happy. So um, those of you out there who nerd on the opening of the key um, or, you know, any variation of the first part of this spread, it's technically the first operation and opening of the four worlds. Um, <clears throat> but again, I'm going to cover all of that in this in this video that I'm working on. And today we'll just do the spread. I will be doing it the way I have always done it. And once this video, this other video drops, or if it has already dropped, I don't know what order these will be in, um, <clears throat> you will know why. You will know why. So that said, let's go ahead and have a look. Here's our fool. I pulled him out ahead of time. Um, I really, really love this deck. I, I knew I would enjoy it, but I did not think I would enjoy it as much as I have. So there's our little guy. And we're going to go ahead and shuffle our little guy back into the deck. Ugh. There we go. So I just have to say, this says the Hermit, <laughs> and it kind of has a similar shape to the Fool, and in my head, my brain transposed it as Kermit, so I was about to pull, <laughs> pull it back out because the Fool is a frog. Okay, just had to throw that out there. Cannot believe it again, again. <clears throat> I'm saying it's going to be in this pile. Ta da! Third week in a row, is it, that we've had the Fool in the Pentacles pile? Amazing. So, as we're becoming very, very, very familiar. <laughs> Um, the, the fool in the pentacles pile relates to 
our physical being, to our finances, to our investments, to our home, to our material belongings, um, mind on the money and money on the mind. Um, yeah, pretty much anything that's to do with the physical realm and living on the earth, which means also that as we proceed with the reading, what we're going to find is that all of... Um, all of our issues and things that come up this week, you know, in the reading are things that will be most easily and readily solved through feeling, uh, rather, feeling would be cups, sorry about that. It will be solved through being and sensing. So really coming into the five senses, coming into our physical being, and occupying our bodies. So the more that we're able to shut off the mind um, allow physical sensations to come through, the easier things will be. All right, so let's get rid of these other cards. Move my extra kitty cat coaster here. Okay, and the fool is not facing a particular direction. I am going to go left. Okay, so something I did not think about in advance of um, the reading today is that there are extra cards in this deck. So when card counting, that presents a really, really interesting quandary. Um, I think, you know, I think, um, <laughs> so yeah. I think when we get to the universe, if we land on the universe and it ha and it ends up being counted, I'm it's 24. I'm trying to decide. I mean, if the world were not already in here, I would say we would count it the same as the world, but the world is in here in this pile. Hard to tell because they all look so similar from the perspective you're in. Um, but yeah, I was just thinking like, okay, how many of the odd cards that are not part of a normal deck are in this reading? Um, by the way, death and the tower are here. <laughs> Aren't you glad to know? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's see. I think, uh, if we land on the universe, I will deal with it when we get there. How about that? All right. So we're going to start with the fool. I am going to count the significator and I'm going to move anti-clockwise around. So the Fool is given a count of three as an elemental card. One, two, three. So our first card is the Two of Matches. All right, one, two. Second card is the Tower. What fun! Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, and it is a planetary card, so uh, the tower is worth nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great. What could be better or more wholesome? The devil. So we have the tower, the devil, and death all in the same pile here. Isn't that fascinating? That almost never happens. Um, okay, so the devil is, as I recall, yeah, Capricorn. Is that right? Yes. So that's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Queen of Needles. Oh, that discernment is necessary. So we have the Queen of Needles. All right. And uh, from her, she is going to be 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, near miss there. So nine of matches. And dog under armpit. Hello, Bubby. Yay. Okay, nine of matches. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're back on the fool. And the fool's still out. So. 
this is so funny. So this is how I'm going to continue. I am continuing past the fool even though I landed on him. Um, yeah, that it just is absolutely what I'm going to do. Again, I'll explain this one later in another video that is either already released or coming so, uh, soon to a YouTube channel near you. Um, I'm being given the hardcore press here by the dog. Okay, so we got the fool. The fool's coming out. The fool is worth three. One, two, three. Great. We've now got death in the reading. <laughs> oh, God. Ah! Okay. It's actually nothing to be afraid of, everybody. I'm having fun with this. Okay, so we have death. Death, as I recall, is a zodiac. Meals. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, page of needles. All right, and pages are worth seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lands us back at death. So we're finishing the week on the page of needles. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. I am going to double check the count to make sure that I've got it correct, and I'll be right back. All right, so, ta-da! Um, it is correct. We do have eight cards this week. Yes, we do. Hmm. All right, so let's see. We're starting with the two of matches, uh, the tower, the devil, the queen of needles, the nine of matches, the fool, the death, and the page of needles. So, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so we're back. Um, and as I'm sitting here looking at this spread and the per, like the trajectory that we're getting here all the way through the week, um, which I'm sorry, I wish could make I wish could make that easier to see on camera. Um, I will at, at some point I will address the camera thing. Um, it just has not been at the top of the list of late. At any rate, um, this is actually really fascinating. Um, I feel like what we're doing here is we're, we have spent the last month kind of moving through some very difficult things that I feel like are now about to come um, to an end in a weird way, but actually in a really positive way. Sorry, just making a little, little adjustment there. I'm hoping that might help. Okay, um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, this actually feels like a really good, like, purification kind of reading in a weird way. Um, but with that said, I am going to just shift us a little bit this way. Let me check in my karma. Yeah, we're good. Um, so we're starting our week this week with the two of matches. Um, and, you know, this is a wonderful deck. It has all these lovely little, um, <laughs> these really cute, it's a squirrel. And it, you know, we've got this, um, the matches, we've got a telescope, I think, on here, etc. But, you know, this is about progression and potentially indecision. We've got that as a key word. We've got um, holding back, discovery, planning, fear of change. Those are all possibilities. You know, I like that we have both light and shadow here in the reversals um, in this deck. And it feels to me like if we've been going on the trajectory each week as it, you know, as, as things have been going, especially through February, that this is actually not going to be a hard week in, in truth. If you have two matches that are together, they are easily stricken together in order to create fire and shift things, right? So I feel like that's where we're starting the week actually is, is with that sense of moving forward, um, planning, discovery, actually looking forward to something but without the ability to actually jump into it yet. I hope that makes sense. So with this with this two of matches, there's a lot of really fascinating, good, wonderful things on the horizon that are actually now visible. They're things, we cleared that energy last week, right? All of that five of cups and all of the emotional heaviness and weight, which good heavens was really, really prevalent and <laughs> very, very there. 
Um, <clears throat> I'm filming this midweek, so I'm I'm just saying like it's been there. So it's really actually kind of nice to see, you know, this new energy coming through. So some progress has been made and there are now decisions to be made based on greater clarity, um, a lot more um, insight, information. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, so this, this deck is great at sparking intuition, I find, no pun intended, because I know that was, that was the two of matches. Um, second card we have is the tower, which, you know, upheaval is here. This for me is about restructuring. So, you know, we're with this two of matches, we're sort of here at the beginning, you know, of our week, looking at, okay, now I have, you know, these are instruments here of travel and the ability to plot and plan. Now we're either going to see things kind of start to fall apart a little bit, or the upheaval is just already in, in place. And it's part of this natural process. And there's a lot of awareness around it. Um, it feels less like, you know, I, I know we have um, awakening and sudden chaos and so on here for keywords and all that upheaval. It feels more like just upheaval. Like there's been upheaval happening. There's been a lot of restructuring, um, rebuilding. But it's not, we're not quite at that point yet, right? We're still here with two of matches. So we're knowing that things have to kind of continue to destructure and come down which is fine, right? This is part of our process. We're now in a space of trying to figure out, okay, I am destructuring this in order to what, right? Um, so yeah, it is it is like planned uh, demolition <laughs> of existing structures and, you know, continued demolition, but with with like an intent on the horizon. I hope that makes sense. Um, from there, we pick up the devil. Um, and of course here it says, what do we have? Restriction, release, self-control, fear, temptation, freedom, um, excess, etc. Interesting. Restriction um, and detachment. Yeah, I mean, hmm, I don't know. What I'm seeing with this one, you know, aside from keywords, which I, I do actually really love, but what I'm really feeling from this, uh, with this tower, is that as we're moving through these energies um, of destructuring, we're going to see, uh, we're going to get an even more in-depth look <laughs> at all of our little patterns of bondage, you know, all of the things that bind us to our stuff. Um, because I feel like a lot of this restructuring, I mean, it's spring. Some of this could be spring cleaning. Some of you may be thinking about buying a new house. Um, I say that, and then, of course, uh, one particular person popped in mind. Um, some of you may be um, moving house, getting ready to welcome new people into your lives. Maybe you're moving in with somebody. Somebody's moving in with you. You know, these kinds of things. Um like, I feel like it's physical structures in our lives that are being, you know, taken down and that we're trying to plan our way through. As that happens, yeah, we're going to we're gonna encounter with a lot of attachment, um, a lot of, you know, with this devil, um, a lot of seeing all of the things that, that you know, have ha a lot of those patterns we're going to be revisiting, right? So as you take apart a room... Uh, or, or clean out a closet or whatever, it really is fascinating because it tells you so much about yourself, right? Um, and I feel like it's more that. I don't feel like we're going to be, it's not something that's going to delve us deep into the trenches of like, Wah! it's like, this is all positive change. Um, there may be a recognition, you know, that a lot of the stuff that you've accumulated, a lot of the things that you have in your life are things that you really don't need um, and that it's time to let go of or, you know, generally just insight, right? Insight about where to go next. When we get to, to the middle of this reading, we have the Queen of Needles, right? Which is clarity of mind. You know, all of this is in service of clearing the mind and giving us greater discernment over our choices, you know, what are the things, you know, I love this. One of the keywords is honest. I love clear of mind. 
um, unbiased, right? So if we're taking a good hard look <clears throat> at ourselves um, and we've spent this, you know, let's look at this trajectory on the way up and then we'll look at it on the, on the deep, you know, on the way down. Um, but, you know, seeing where we're about to head, what direction we're going in, knowing why it is that things are coming down, restructuring, falling apart, because we know we're going to build something new. And as we're on that journey, the devil here is showing us where we've been restricted in past. It's helping us to revisit patterns, but from a very, very different place. Because all of it is in service of getting greater clarity, you know, about this new direction or about these things that are, that are unfolding. You know, as we want to rebuild our lives, how do we want that to look? How do we want it to work? Um, what kinds of things would we like to create, you know, moving forward? Well, we can't do that without this kind of clarity. Yeah. All right. But alongside that, we're going to need that clarity move. So how are we doing here? I think we're okay. Um, as we move in, you know, forward in the week and through this process, um, and I feel like this is all being, un this is unfolding. This is an unfolding process. We're going to need this clarity of mind provided by the Queen of Needles or Queen of Swords because, um, <laughs> You know, in the midst of all of this, we've got this nine of matches, right? Here it says resilience. Here it says exhaustion. Um, what do we, uh, we have persistence, um, paranoia, courage, struggle. Yeah, that's possible. Those are all possible. What I'm getting um, is more of like having everything happen all at once. So you know, going through this whole process, you know, we go, it, it goes from being pretty balanced and easy. And then suddenly we go through, <laughs> we go through the tower and the devil. And then we go to the queen, jump to the queen of needles and then right to the, the nine of matches. Um, and this nine of matches is hot, you know, matches are hot. They burn. Um, it feels like things heat up. And literally everything happens at once. So suddenly, boom, all of it's happening. And that clarity of mind is going to be necessary in order to keep things straight. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting. And then, of course, you know, as it all happens, and we're headed back down the other side here, um you know, we're finding ourselves on this new beginning, on this new journey, and it's significant. You know, this is very, very significant. So this is everything you wanted all too soon, right? Um, and then we, yeah, we've got these new beginnings. Um, what else? We have spontaneity, free spirit, naivete, risk, recklessness. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's more like continuing on a new journey. We've had the fool coming up a lot. We definitely had it last week. I feel like I've we've had it at least once in our spread over the last month. Um, in addition to this, so so our you know our significator as the as the person on the journey, right? The fool keeps coming up for us um, and showing us that like there's new things coming, that the journey is continuing. Um, there's a lot of movement forward. All right, so especially with this nine of matches, that's going to be the case. I'm going to say we're going to need to be very, um, <laughs> we're really going to need the uh, clarity from this, this pelican. Yeah, we're really going to need her because, yeah, with all of this happening and coming up and shifting us, uh, you know, forward on, on the path, um, it's going to be a necessity. It's just going to be a necessity. Yeah, moving forward. Um, there's going to be a lot happening. The next thing we need to be aware of is um, is death. No, kidding. <laughs> Literally, like, I'm sorry, I just had to do that. Okay, no, um, we need to be aware that, you know, again, we're on this new journey. We're also saying goodbye to the things, you know, that, that we have with us, right? So... We're tearing down those structures. We're saying goodbye to stuff. We're saying goodbye to people. 
Um, you know, things are, are happening really, really fast, really fast. Um, you know, this isn't just, I love this. It's, this also feels fast to me because we're going from zero to 13 in, you know, a split second, <laughs> you know, after, you know, the journey got lit on fire all of a sudden, right? We're getting like all this, it's very hot, very fast, very quick, and it's on wheels. It's death on wheels. Look at that. Boom, it takes off. Um, so whatever changes we're making, they're very quick, they're very sudden, and they're going to require an immediate, there's an immediacy to it. All right. Um, I have that kind of fortune teller energy going here because this deck has that so much. Um, as it does, look at that, the page of needles. Um, look at that rooster. This is a very, this is not at all how I read the Page of Swords. We have manipulation on upside down deception. All talk. Yeah, I don't see that. Curiosity, yes. New ideas, restlessness. Yeah, I mean, I feel like really we're just going to be on our feet. This is going to have us moving and on our feet, full of ideas, full of new things. Um, you know, it's very quick. And I feel like it is going to leave us with our feathers ruffled um, by the end of the week because this is all very, very fast. There's such a speed. Are there any other things that indicate speed? No. No. Okay, so we're looking at a really sudden change this week too um, where we're going from, whoo, we're going from, um, yeah, this two of matches over here, very, very quickly, you know, reason of, not, what am I saying? I'm all over the map here. I got to take a breath. Yeah, so we're starting the week with the two of matches. So things start in a stasis. They're slow. We're seeing things plot out. So we get the tower. We know that things are, you know, are going to be in upheaval. It's an anticipation. We know it's coming. We know it's going to happen. We don't know quite when or how, but we know that it's in service of, of building something new. Um, again, uh, we've got, I mean, it could literally be, rest I mean, it's restructuring something. Even if this, let's say this were your fitness routine, guys. <clears throat> Even if this were about health, um, you know, that you're, you're looking at redoing, um, you know, <sighs> I mean, you're, you're tearing things down. You're still going to be asked to rebuild something new and you're still going to be asked to look at patterns, things that bind you. Nothing can bind you like sugar when you don't get to have any, right? Um, it says, says the sugar addict. Um, oof, I'm trying to work on that. So yeah, as those patterns come up, we want to stay in the body, staying anchored and grounded through all of this will help us get clarity of mind as will this Queen of Needles, all right? And then things are going to pick up and happen very, very fast. So from that slow place where things were kind of plodding along and you could stay sort of in the mind, we are back on our feet. You know, everything happening all at once. We're going to, hopefully we will be resilient, who knows. Um, but we're taking, you know, starting off on this new journey as we're starting, there's a lot of farewells, you know, a goodbye, literal goodbyes, um, literal shedding of things, getting rid of stuff, um, you know, all of the recognition possibly that happened in here with this devil card as you're, as you're working with the tower to restructure um, may, may result as you go along saying, no, actually, I really don't need these things. I can get rid of them. You know, but the entire thing is going to have you um, running around like a like a headless chicken. Not really a headless, just that chicken still has its head. But you know what I'm saying. It's going to leave us moving around, active, doing things, um, moving on it, moving on it. So with that said, I feel like we need something in in the way of a an oracle card. Because that is a big frenetic energy. There is no earth in this. We needed that earth. You know, we that's why we need the being. That's why we need the being. Um, <clears throat> I think we'll try. Mm. Well, 
I know I'm, I'm relying heavily on this a lot lately, but it's because it's just so stinking good. Let's have a spirit doodle card, everybody. Let's have a spirit doodle card. I'm going to sit over here and do some shuffling. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, this is insane. So <clears throat> the card that came up is faith. <laughs> and wait till you hear some of the things that Elrond has written about this one. Um, so he says first, I would like to make the distinction between two different kinds of faith. The first is based on an attitude that everything is going to be okay. It is basically optimism. Seeing the glass half full, believing in a positive affirmations, or jumping in head first. I envy people who have that kind of faith. These folks will land on their feet no matter what, with a big smile on their faces saying, Oh well, next time it'll be better. I sometimes wish they could bottle that attitude and sell it on Amazon. I would buy a couple of cases, and you know I would too. Um, the second kind of faith is based on experience. That's the kind I have. Any worthwhile project I've been involved with, such as producing an album, finishing a doctorate, moving from one country to another, coming out, getting married, required an enormous amount of faith. Faith that at the end of the day, after many hours of hard work and after overcoming many obstacles, you might just get to the happy ending. For many of us, having faith usually starts with thinking, oh, I can do this, but for me, it isn't. Instead, for me, faith will uh, is something more like, I think I can do this. I will probably fall a couple of times. It might hurt, but it looks like fun and it's worth doing. And I have people around me who will guide me and help me if things go wrong, so here goes. To me, understanding this difference in attitude is paramount. Um, wow. I mean, the, and then it's, he says, uh, when this card comes up, you are asked to trust spirit and allow her to help you in uh, step into the unknown. If you have done your work and are well prepared, a bridge will appear. Holy shit. So this is so, um, completely, um, so, wow, it's just so relevant to the entire week's journey ahead. Um, and that, that is what I tend to find here. There's no element for this card either, I think. Or that means something else. Maybe it means spirit or essence. Um, I feel like I've seen that somewhere with this deck and I can't remember now what it meant. But um, either way... What we're getting here very is very, very much about um, taking that leap of faith uh, from a place that is grounded. I think that's what impresses me the most is that his description about all of this is a very grounded one. Yeah, and it all really kind of fits together here. So with that, folks, I wish you a beautiful, happy March. Um, getting it started, it looks like it is off to a flying start. Perhaps in like a lion, maybe it'll be out like a lamb, we can hope, in a good way, obviously. This is all about growth. So there we are. All right, folks, thank you so, so much, and I will speak to you again very, very soon. Bye.